So I've got a piece of music that I wrote about four years ago. Um, it's called D.O.W. It was an experimentation of sounds and uh, sound design sort of mixed with a uh, punk rock essence. So I thought we'd go into the sequencer, check it out, have some fun, see if there's anything that might be interesting for us to pull out and listen to. So here we go. One of the first elements that you're gonna hear is this little bell, which it looks like is just a zebra sound. But the thing about it that makes it interesting is that I'm using the pitch wheel to bend it. And that's just a big thing for me with pretty much every instrument, is that I like to bend things so that they're out of tune. I guess it seems a little counterintuitive musically to purposefully be out of tune, uh, but that was something that I was experimenting with here with the bell. I usually do it with strings too, where they're kind of weaving in and out of tune, and it gives it uh, something that's a lot more interesting um, to listen to. Something here that's kind of cool is there's this bass. It's got this really cool kind of like watery sound if we listen to it. So it's got this really cool fat bottom end. And then there's a bass pulse on top of that. Let's see. Now that's cool. There we go. Here's something I'll point out about that. It's a small element, but I do this with a lot of elements in this track. It would have been very easy just to have that continuing on and on. But instead I'm breaking it up and I'm just having it hit and then there's rest. And that's really important, uh, I think, to point out because having silence between sounds is what keeps the sound interesting and allows you to sort of bring in other elements and let them be heard. Next over here, we've got, let's see, Chopper. What's this? Ooh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Pretty much every track on this uh, piece of music has some sort of distortion to give it this really gritty, messy tone. So, Right in there, we introduce uh, the mouth percussion, which I uh, performed myself. It's got this very annoying, wet smacking sound. And so that's kind of coming in and out, making sort of interesting textures. And I combine that with these footsteps of uh, moving on gravel. And they've got this kind of overlap, to be honest. They, the footsteps on the gravel have this sort of squishy wetness as well. All these things are just very sort of like atypical. They're not normal sounds that you're gonna hear in a score or in music, but I thought they made things kind of interesting. That's the main... Ooh, it's so cool. That's the main sound of this piece of music, is that sort of vocal thing. And that comes from the exhale library from output. And I have distorted it. And then I also kind of um, manipulated it inside of the instrument itself. So here's all those elements we just broke down. They're all sort of coming together to create this dark atmosphere and then we introduce that sort of exhale vocal thing as the start of something happening just listening to it. It's just like, ugh, it's kind of spooky. And there's that mouth percussion blending in with everything.
One element that we haven't looked yet at yet, which is really important, is the drums. And that's actually a really big part of the production quality of the track is how the drums are mixed in here. It's a very, very simple drum part, but let me show you what I've done here. I've got a bunch of hi-hats, right? So there's one hi-hat and it's coming from, uh, I think just, yeah, Native Instruments drum set here. This is the Studio Drummer. So it's playing a very uh, basic 16th note rhythm. I've used a Cambridge EQ to really sort of dial in the tone. But Portal from, again, Output. This is a preset called Drum Destruct. Let's listen to the hi-hat without it, right? That sounds like a normal hi-hat. It does not represent this sort of dystopian vibe that this whole track is about. It doesn't have that gritty undertone to it. So we put on this portal preset. And now it's got something really cool that blends in with the track. Tone-wise, it is now a part of the greater arrangement. And so that, it's a small thing, it's just a hi-hat, but that's to me a small example of how mixing and production in a track like this is part of composing. It's not just like something that you leave to another engineer, it's part of the creative process. It is deeply integrated into it. So then we have some other drum elements over here. Let's check it out. This is from Project Sam Swing Library. So what that's doing is that's doubling the hi-hat in the opposite speaker. So the regular hi-hat, I've got all the way right. This drum is all the way left and it's doing the same thing as the other hi-hat, but that's creating a stereo image that is making things sound a bit off kilter and a little more strange. Then we've got this snare with the snares turned off. adding some nice distortion on there so that when it really kind of hits harder, you see it's not distorting on the little hits, but on the big, more powerful ones, it gets a little grittier. So that with just your regular kick drum, let's listen to what these drums sound like. You got the snare all the way left, you got the hi-hat all the way right, you've got the effects on the hi-hat. If that was just all sort of like panned and mixed like a regular drum set, it wouldn't have the same effect. So now moving forward, we've got this little breakdown musically here where everything just sort of calms down for a second before it gets really big and um, goes to the big finale. That's the best part of the piece of music. I mean, that's that's the payoff right there. And the thing that makes it cool, other than the fact that it's like very driving, very punk rock and, and very gritty, is that we've introduced these other elements, these elements of aggression and these sounds, and they've been leading to something and that's what it is. Let's see here. Let's break some of that down because it's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. This is a synth scream that I made. If you remember that, sort of um, vocal sound from Exhale. I have taken it, I've made one go an octave higher, and then uh, I made another one go an octave lower, and then we've got the original one in the middle. And the octave higher and the octave lower are split left and right. So we're taking up a much broader uh, part of the uh, sonic field now, and it really hits you. It becomes like fully realized, you know? So if that's the first version of the sound right here, that's our first introduction to it. Here is what it evolves to. This is what it becomes for the very, very ending. 
Now it is totally unrecognizable as any sort of vocal element. Now it is like a synth scream. I don't think you get much more gnarly than that and gritty. On this synth, let's see, I've got Bad Filter, Timeless, uh, Valhalla, Reverb, Decapitator, and all that is running with a compressor at the end because basically we listen to it, the compressor is just like squashing all of those effects into, it's like baking it into the synth and it's making it like even more grungy and gnarly and uh, the effects are really coming out. So here, we'll just listen to it. You know, it, if you hear it too, you hear how like the synth pokes through and it's happening and then as it comes down, the the sort of radio effect delay is popping out. That's because of the compressor because the compressor is like pushing all that stuff down and then breathing and it's really cool. Other stuff that I want to show you in this, which makes this ending finale of the, the piece of music just really kind of um, fun and intense. Here's something that you don't get every day uh, in a composition. Evil laughter. I've also got this combined with that, which is this sort of heavy metal screaming. Oof, distorted to no end and not pleasant to listen to. You can hear the raspiness in the singer's voice um, and it's perfect. I'm going to break down now uh, the drums in this section because we broke them down in the previous section and they sound really cool. They're really sh like they cut through really, really nicely. We've got an acoustic kick here from 8DO. I'm using it looks like their Zeus main kit and the snare is studio drummer. So that's something I do commonly when uh, producing and creating drums is I'll combine different elements from different kits. So you just kind of got to pick and choose the snares and the room tones and stuff that sound best to you. And for this particular piece of music worked nicely for me. I am compressing and distorting the hell out of that snare so that it really snaps and, and, and has a really heavy vibe. So like, Yeah, you see, it's just all the way the needle is going. And then look at the compressor. There is no subtlety in this piece of music in this section. And so we're mixing accordingly for that. We are not being uh, considerate of the compressor needle. Everything is basically cranked up to 11 and you feel that when uh, the track kicks in. So uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope it's informative. If you want to check out the full piece of music, how all these elements come together, then, um, you know, just head over to Spotify, iTunes, anywhere. It's called D-O-W. Give it a listen. I hope you enjoy.